G'day folks, it is time to give our paper CubeSat another mission. So this time we're gonna try and gather some data, gather some information about the environment that's around us. So this is a pretty similar mission to very early spacecraft like the first US satellite, Explorer 1, which collected information about the radiation uh, high above the Earth uh, that led us to detect the Van Allen belts. Uh, and it also collected a bunch of information about the temperature uh, and the environment up there in space. Uh, and it's also a pretty similar mission to Binar 2, 3, and 4, which will be doing something pretty similar, actually. They're gonna be collecting a bunch of data about radiation up there in space, but each spacecraft is gonna have a different set of uh, radiation shielding developed by our colleagues at CSIRO. Uh, and we're gonna see not just how much radiation there is up there in space, uh, but we're also gonna have a different piece of radiation shielding on each spacecraft to figure out how well that radiation shielding actually stops the radiation from getting inside the CubeSat. So before we get into that, we are going to need to make sure we have our spacecraft bus ready to go. That means our structure, which in our case is made from uh, cardboard, not so much from space grade aluminium. And we're gonna need our electrical power system ready to go. And we're also gonna need our flight computer, which is the uh, AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. So for this mission, the data we're gonna be collecting is temperature and the sensor we're gonna be using to do it is this. It's called an MCP9701. We put some voltage in on one of these pins we connect the ground to another of these pins, and on the third pin, we get a certain number of volts out, depending on what the temperature outside the sensor is. And we can use our microcontroller to measure how many volts are coming out of that pin and do something accordingly, change another part of the circuit according to how many volts we're getting on that third pin. So to figure that out, we are gonna to turn to something that Jacob introduced us to, the data sheet for this particular component. The first thing we need to know is which pin is which, and that is right here on the front page. We know that uh, with this little dude around this way with the flat side out and the pins facing down like that, we know that this one here is our ground. This one here gets connected to power and this one in the middle is our voltage out. So that's the one that needs to be connected to one of the pins of our microcontroller so that we can take a reading. Rather than just plugging it straight into the breadboard, I am going to attach it to a set of jumper leads. And that way we can kind of thread it to a different part of our spacecraft. We can thread it to the outside of our spacecraft even uh, and see what the temperature is like out there. First thing I'm gonna connect up is our ground pin. We know that that one goes pretty much anywhere that's connected to either this middle pin, this black wire across here. We can plug it in there, that will do nicely. We're also gonna need our five volts connected. So that's gonna give our component its input voltage. And we know that that is on this row here. So I'm gonna pop that one in there, right where the microcontroller gets its power as well. And then the third one, we need to connect to one of our pins on our microcontroller. Now, each pin can do different things. So we've got to make sure that we're picking the right one. So to do that, I'm just going to grab our little cheat sheet and have a look up the top here. So the data that we're going to be getting back from this sensor is what we call analog data. So it's not just on or off, it can be anywhere in a range of voltages. It might be zero volts, it might be five volts, it might be pretty much anywhere in between. So we're gonna need a pin that can do analog read. Uh, and if we have a look at our pin descriptions here, pins A1, A2, and A3 are set up for reading sensor input with analog read. So that's uh, A1 is this one here, right underneath our five volt in. We can also use pin number two here or pin number three here. So I'm going to pop this into A1. So that one right underneath our five volt in line. Just gonna get that a little closer for you. So we're gonna pop that one in to there. And remember we can put it anywhere on that row because everything in that row is connected. So that's our sensor connected up. The next thing we're gonna need to do is figure out a way to get our data back. So on our previous mission, we used an LED. And we're actually gonna add a second LED so that we can tell the difference between basically whether our sensor is reading hot or cold. So for that, I'm gonna grab two LEDs. So these, we're gonna hook up to two of the other pins on our microcontroller. We just need to make a note of uh, which one they are. A1 
is our temp sensor, pin zero, that's our red LED. So let's use pin one as our blue LED, that way they're all neatly lined up. So let's connect those up. So we're gonna pop our red LED into pin zero, that's uh, this one here. We're gonna pop our blue LED onto pin one, or the, uh, the cable for our blue LED onto pin one. And then we're gonna connect our LEDs up to our jumper cables. So we're gonna slide the long leg of our blue LED in here. And this is the same way we hooked our, our temperature sensor up. And we're gonna slide the long leg of our red LED in here. Now our LEDs also need to be connected to ground. We don't have a complete circuit yet, but we can cheat a little bit. Uh, they don't really care if they're both connected to the same ground wire. So I'm gonna save myself a little bit of wiring. I'm gonna pop another ground wire into that row there that we know is grounded. And I'm actually going to uh, cram both of these little legs into the same jumper lead like that. And they don't care that they're sharing a ground because it all goes back to the same place anyway. So that we're gonna to attach to the top of our antenna. That's gonna be our little uh, signaling device to let us know whether our temperature sensor is reading hot or cold. All right, so that's our hardware mostly together. Now it's time to write a little bit of software to make our hardware go. So let's jump into Arduino. So we're gonna start with a new blank sketch set up for the at tiny 85. And we are also going to make sure that our programmer is in the side here, ready to go, ready to put our code onto our chip. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is set up our pins. Our red pin is at pin zero. We know that our blue pin is pin one. And we know that our sensor pin is A1. So in our setup function, which is the uh, little bit of code that gets run once when our microcontroller first gets switched on, we are going to set our pin mode. So we're gonna set pin mode. We're gonna start with our red pin and our pin is gonna be set to output. And with a semicolon, we're gonna set pin mode blue pin output as well and end with a semicolon. And finally, pin mode sensor pin, set that one to input. So that should be all of our pins set up to do what we need them to do. Now it's time to write our mission code that's actually gonna uh, collect our data and send it back to us. And we're gonna put that in our loop section. So that's the bit of our code that's gonna run over and over and over again. So the way I want this to work is I want the red LED to turn on if we're above a certain temperature. I want the blue LED to turn on if we're below that temperature. The first thing we need to do is actually collect some information about what our temperature actually is. And we're gonna store that in a variable that we're creatively gonna call temperature. And to collect that data, we are going to do an analog read on our sensor pin. So that's gonna put whatever voltage is in our sensor pin uh, into that variable for us to use later. Uh, now if we check our little uh, cheat sheet here, we can see that's gonna be somewhere between zero and 1023. So zero volts will return zero and our circuit voltage, so that's about five volts for us, will return 1,023. So we're gonna have a number that's somewhere between zero and 1,023. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to need to decide is which temperature we want our lights to switch over at. But to do that, we're gonna to need to do a little bit of maths. Let me just chuck a bit of code in here first. We're gonna call that variable temp limit. And we don't know what that's gonna be equal to yet. All right, I'm just gonna switch back to uh, a pen and paper for a second, because some things are actually easier on paper and our data sheets to have a look at. We know that our value that we're gonna be getting in our variable is somewhere between zero and 1024. We know that zero equals zero volts, and we know that 1024 equals five volts. All right, we also know our temperature sensor actually follows a particular 
function for how much voltage it spits out depending on the temperature. And we can find that function here. So our voltage out is equal to whatever the ambient temperature is. So that's the temperature we're trying to measure times the temperature coefficient that we can find in the DC electrical characteristics table plus the sensor output voltage at zero degrees Celsius. So it doesn't read zero at zero. Uh, when we're at zero degrees, we're gonna have a particular amount of voltage coming out because it does actually work a little bit below freezing. So we need some, uh, some room in there. So our temperature we know is equal to something times our temperature plus whatever the value at zero is. So we're gonna just flip over to our electrical characteristics table to look these up. We're gonna make sure we're looking at the right sensor, which is the 9701. So that is 400 millivolts at zero degrees. And we can see that our temperature coefficient is 19.5 millivolts for each degree Celsius that the temperature goes up. That means our equation for our voltage is our temperature times 19.5 plus 400. All right, so that's gonna tell us how many, I should make that say millivolts. That's gonna tell us how many millivolts our temperature sensor is spitting out. The next thing we need to figure out is how many millivolts our microcontroller needs to read to increase that value that we're receiving uh, by one. So we know that our sensor gets, uh, when, when our sensor is getting five volts or 5,000 millivolts, just so we're using the same units, we're reading 1,024. We know that when it's zero, it's zero. So we're not having to add anything to that. Uh, that means that whatever comes out of our sensor is equal to 1024 on 5,000 times however many millivolts we're getting in. Uh, and that works out to be 0.2048 times the voltage we're getting in on the pin. So now all we need to do <laughs> is connect these two equations together. We know how to turn our temperature into millivolts. We know how to turn our millivolts into our sensor reading. So we're gonna connect these two together by plugging this equation for our millivolts into our sensor value here. So we have 0 0.2048 times, in brackets, T times 19.5 plus 400. Um, I'm not gonna try and do that by hand because it's way too hard. I'm just gonna snap my fingers and have it already solved. But I'm sure your maths teacher can help you uh, figure that one out if you need help. So with that equation, we can pick a temperature and uh, figure out which value that's going to show up as in our code. Um, and that will let us set the point where we want our project to switch from our red LED to our blue LED. So I reckon anything above 50 counts as hot, <laughs> definitely does to me. Uh, and snap my fingers again. And we can see that our magic number is 281.6. I'm gonna round that up to 282, just because we're using integers in our code, which means whole numbers, uh, and adding points into our numbers adds a whole lot of complexity that we don't really wanna deal with, especially given that it doesn't really make a huge difference for the kinds of temperature differences that we're talking about. So we can jump back to our code now. We're gonna set our temperature limit to 282. And then we're gonna write a little bit of code to turn our LEDs on and off. All right, so if our temperature is greater than our temperature limit, we are gonna do exactly the same thing that we did in our Blinky test. We're gonna go digital right. We're gonna turn our red pin to high. And if our temperature is less than our temp limit, we are gonna set our blue pin to high. And we're gonna give ourselves a, let's say, 100 milliseconds to uh, have a little look at what we've done. And then we're gonna turn both of our lights off and our loop will start again. All right, so that should 
get our little temperature sensor up and running. Let's uh, whack our microcontroller in there and hit upload using programmer. All right, so let's try it in our actual circuit. Just gonna drop that in there, pull that across. All right, good start. Our blue LED is lit up because we're hopefully below 50 degrees in the room that we're in right now. I have a mug of hot water here just to see that where uh, everything is working properly. I'm gonna hold this up against the side of our mug. There we go. And it flicks over to red. And if we uh, pull this off our mug, there we go, back to blue again. Back up to red and back down to blue. We're gonna have our uh, temperature sensor stick out through the bottom of our CubeSat in the same spot that our star tracking camera uh, sticks out on our actual BIN R234 mission. So we're gonna have this guy just stick out through here. And just like last time, we're gonna have our little signal LEDs coming out the top of our antenna. Chuck our power back on before we uh, fold it up. Uh, as usual for CubeSats, getting it all to fit in is the trickiest part. Yes, all right, there we go. Our first science mission, our first sensor is up and ready. And then hopefully we whack our uh, little sensor up against the side of our coffee. There it goes, turns red. So if you're feeling super brave, you could probably put it on top like that. And then uh, Bina would tell you once your coffee got cold. Although putting a little uh, pile of paper and electronics on top of a cup of water, probably not the best idea. So maybe don't do that. So that's our first science mission. That's the first time we've actually made measurements and had those measurements sent back to us in a format that we can use. So I will leave tweaking that number uh, in that temperature limit to try and use it to measure different things up to you um, and trying to figure out how accurate and how precise you can get it. Um, I'll leave that as a challenge for you as well.